Hi there everyone, my name is Pureg Jathani and I'm an MD MBA student here at Yale. And today we're going to be talking all about organizational grit and more, more broadly grit in general because grit is the passion and perseverance to go after a certain goal. And then we're going to open it up to the aspect of how it's important in organizations because we as future healthcare professionals are going to be in an organization where, trust me, you need a lot of organizational grit. Um, the source for this entire presentation is from this article, which was published in the Harvard Business Review. I'm taking a few quotes from there, but more importantly, uh, the information is also stuff that I learned through Angela Duckworth's book, Grit. It's actually called Grit, and Angela Duckworth uh, is a psychologist, uh, Dr. Angela Duckworth, and she um, wrote a whole book on just this exact topic and why it's so important. Now let's just address the basics, which is the two com critical components of grit are passion and perseverance. It's not just important to be passionate about something, it's also important to persevere after it. Similarly, it's not just important to like go after a goal if you're not purely passionate about it, because that oftentimes can be rather futile. So passion comes from intrinsic interest in your craft and from a sense of purpose that what you're doing uh, is for something that is much greater than yourself, right? And, and in healthcare, that's somewhat easier to find than in other places. And perseverance takes the form of resilience in the face of adversity, getting pushed down multiple times, but still having the ability to come back up. You will see that in healthcare, the problem today is that we actually rely on a lot of greedy individuals. Uh, you may have seen over the last two years, multiple people have just had the, the craziest amount of their grit tested as more and more people have had COVID-19 and hospitals have been overburdened with patients. The people who are taking care of those patients are individuals who you hope and actually do have quite a lot of grit and it takes a lot to do their jobs. But in today's world, it's almost impossible for one person's grit to carry an entire system. There's so much knowledge to know, there's so many things to do, and there's so many things that can be missed that oftentimes you need people to come together to create a solution. And that's where you have to create organizational grit. We'll talk a bit about grit on an individual level next, and then at the end of this presentation, I'm going to open it up to organizational grit and how we can do better. But the next few, next few pages are all about how we can improve our own personal grit. You will see that actually if you want to determine your grit, you can take this questionnaire right now, um, answer each of these questions, try to do it relatively quickly, add up your score, and that's kind of going to describe the aspect of grit that you have. Um, I'm going to tell you how to score it shortly, but notice like what are these questions getting at? Notice that I am a hard worker. I have difficulty maintaining my focus on projects. I finish whatever I begin. My interests change from year to year. Each of these things is measuring um, your certain level of perseverance, but also a certain level of passion. Uh, and this aspect of trying to show people that you're able to be committed to something. Once you add up your score and divide by 10, you actually can get your grit score. And, and, and a grit score above 4.5, for example, puts you at in the top 10% of individuals who have grit. And grit, in general, has been shown to be associated with a lot of good stuff. Like the people who um, are most likely to graduate from West Point, for example, tend to have very high grit scores. People who graduate from medical school, chances are they have pretty good grit, grit scores just because of the perseverance you need in this sort of field. So overall, the questionnaires can actually be quite easy to game. And so what this paper actually recommends is that aside from just asking yourself this questionnaire, which actually can be great if you want to determine your own grit score, but oftentimes when you ask other people, this questionnaire can be easy to game. So what should we do instead? There are different ways to do it. One could be to look for multi-year commitments and objective evidence of advancement and achievement as opposed to people who are consistently changing between different jobs. Um, the other thing is when you're checking for references, you also want to listen for evidence that candidates have bounced back from failure and can persist as opposed to being dejected when failure does happen. Most of all, look for signs that people are driven by a purpose bigger than themselves and that one resonates with the mission of your organization. So these are just several other ways that you can instill grit um, and screen for grit. And if you're someone who's thinking of developing grit, these are the things that you can do. Try to figure out what your purpose is. Uh, try to determine how you can be a bit more resilient in the pursuits you do, whether that's something as silly as a YouTube channel like mine uh, that you just continue posting on for three to four years, or just... Uh, any, any activity that you're particularly passionate about. Now let's actually move on to the fact that even if you are gritty, let's say you are leading a team, you don't want to just screen for very gritty individuals because oftentimes uh, these gritty individuals 
may be gritty in different ways and for different forms of purpose. So you want to not only have gritty individuals, but you want to have gritty individuals that are focused on a common goal. And once you set that goal together, you can actually then have, which is the topic of this presentation, organizational grit. This means that whenever you're leading a team, whenever you're a part of a team, all of us want to be very gritty, but we all want to be gritty in the right direction. And because of that, organizational grit can be very tough to determine. So gritty healthcare institutions have clear goal hierarchies, like the, hypo, uh, like the hypothetical schematic, which I'm going to show you on the next slide. Uh, and once you actually have this grit focused on one location, you can then actually achieve goals in monumental ways. Uh, let me now show you this diagram, which is, for example, this is a cardiologist goal hierarchy. And you'll see that for a cardiologist, they may be focused on improving patients, um, improving patients' cardiovascular quality and length of life. And then you can then break that big level goal into multiple smaller level goals, whether it's encouraging exercise, healthy eating, prescribing therapy, all of these things, and then being persistent and persevering to each of these things to maintain your bigger goal. Similarly, you may know that the Mayo Clinic, which is one of the biggest institutions in the world and most world renowned for the type of care they provide, their motto is to put the patient's needs uh, first. And they then break that down into maybe improving care quality, reducing costs, promoting wellness. And then when you're recruiting individuals, you want to find people who are gritty in these particular facets that can actually help further the organization. I personally found this entire article to be very insightful. I hope you did too. If you want to read the whole thing, I'm going to link it in the description below. It's all about organizational uh, grit, obviously written partially by Angela Duckworth, who is phenomenal. So with all that being said, I hope this video taught you not only how to improve your own grit, but also how to you know, lead teams and provide grit. So thank you all so much for watching. If you did like this video, please drop a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.